Has your headache gone yet? Welcome as we continue the takeover celebrations. Hair of the dog. Let's not let's we, we go again. We go again. Hashtag cans is not a day, it's a state of mind. <laughs> Welcome as we continue the takeover celebrations here on NFTV. I'm your host for the evening, Sam. I'm joined by Liam in the top right as I go around clockwise, Brandon and Harry. It's going to be a night of celebration. We look back on last night. We've got some fantastic clips to show you. We're going to be joined by some very, very special guests during the course of the next two hours as well. But I'll come to you first, Liam. You were there at St. James's Park last night. Sum up the evening. Um, unbelievable atmosphere. It was it was one of them things where I was I was sitting in the house and I just knew I would regret it if I didn't actually go to the ground. So I jumped straight on the metro with them when I met Lee and Lee and Sarah. Uh, Lee, Lee and Johnny, I wish it was you Lee. wish you met me. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it was just surreal. Like, there was people getting drunk all over and there was no violence whatsoever. It was just people just enjoying being happy in the moment. Um, might have been a bit of a clean-up operation this morning happening, but apart from that, it was a, it was a good afternoon. Apparently there was. Apparently it was all cleaned up by 8am, which was amazing unheard of which is kind of a good thing when you see um, Murdad and Amanda Stabley there at the at St James's Park this afternoon um get your comments in and we'll go through as many as we can throughout the evening um Brandon I'm assuming you're in Holland this evening because I know you're in yes. a different European country every day how was it looking on did it want to make you board the first ferry out of Amsterdam uh, it actually did yeah uh I'm still looking into things, but uh, it has been the best day of my life, I can tell, uh, for sure. Um, yeah, when waking up was mental as well. I was, the whole day I was ready to come on for the live stream. Uh, oh, what's this? Uh, <laughs> Lee's on, I should put out Lee's on controls and he's having some fun with the layouts today, I think. <laughs> anyway, uh, I was bussing all day and when it finally got through, uh, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I screamed as loud as I could at home. Uh, I even uh, did it on the WhatsApp uh, group. Uh, what can I say? It's 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 mental. It's I I couldn't dream of this being true actually, and it's still a little, little bit surreal, I guess. Uh, absolutely. I mean, we're going to welcome in our first guest uh, in in a moment. Um, but Harry, you're there in Manchester, I believe. Um, you were on Talk Sport actually. As soon as the the news broke, um, d- did you ha- did it have a chance to even sink in before you started chatting away to was it Andy Goldstein? No, absolutely not. It was t- t- to be honest, that probably was a bit of a letdown because I was just I was just in shock. Like this this takeover is just unbelievable. Like. It, it's affected me unbelievable amounts. Like yesterday, I felt like it was the best day of my life. Like, honestly, un- unbelievable. Like, I just couldn't believe it. And I'm sure there's a lot of other people out there that felt the same. At um, 14 years of Mike Ashley, it's just it just gets here, doesn't it? But um, no, it, it didn't sink in at all while I was on talk sport. Um, but unbelievable scenes. Like, I just hope everyone enjoyed themselves yesterday, last night, because I wish I was there. Well, one man that was there is someone we're going to bring in now. It's the Chronicles Andrew Musgrove from the Everything is Black and White podcast and it's just general gen, general multimedia stuff. Good evening, Andrew. How was you, guys? You all right? Has it sunk in for you? You were there last night. I mean, sum up your feel, sum up your day. Um which is it was a whirlwind where well, it's been a whirlwind 40 hours hasn't it and then um yesterday we got you know word that it was imminent and we didn't exactly know when it was going to happen and then i got told to go up to st james's park and um yeah just have a look what's going on and get ready for some sort of announcement and up we went i went up about must be about half past 11 midday i got there and there were a few people milling around just waiting um it must have been a photographer's uh dream because you just had people like checking their phone like that and it was the perfect shot um and at one point there was probably more photographers and press there than actual people who gradually during the day got a bit more busy and then what about five o'clock you you could sense as we got further on during the day nerves were starting to, to, to kind of creep in because we were being told it's going to be imminent it's imminent it's coming it's coming and we're like 
where, where is it? And then obviously, um, it was really funny because the, the, the square outside St. Jim's Park, so the Sid Boy Robson statue, it was, it was quite busy. It was mulling around. And then there was a chap on the other side of the road, uh, so where the food bank usually is, but just a bit further down. And he shouted, like, it's done, it's done. And everyone just erupted in this big celebration. And then the flares went off. And there's me and a few other guys saying, like trying because every, everyone was checking it and we couldn't get any signal because everyone's doing the same and then you've got people in front of you and say, well, we need to record this and get it because people think it's done, but we we're waiting on the official confirmation. And what he'd seen, I think, was the tweets about the shares being transferred and the money going over. But at that time, you're still thinking, well, with it, let's wait for the confirmation. But you just got carried along with it. And it was such a, I mean, the events after that were absolutely brilliant. Um, you've, you've all seen the videos from various people. It was absolutely crazy. Uh, you know, the chance and at one point everyone marched up towards the car park, I think where Keith Downey was on top of the car park filming. Um and it was just one like it was just it was just a big party atmosphere. And um someone tweeted when I posted that video where they're marching to and I just felt like saying they they they're just marching to a better future, aren't we? Because that's that's essentially what we were doing if you want to get a bit cheesy with it. You know, this is a new dawn and don't we all deserve it? Oh, I mean, it's been a long time coming. Um, we're going to spoil everyone watching now um, because Lee's going to have the unenviable task of kicking out either Brandon or Harry. <laughs> and um, we're going to be welcoming on Nobby Solano very, very shortly. Well, any second now, he's just getting ready to come on as he leaves his hotel room because uh, Peru have got a game, I think. But, um, Andrew, just before we get Nobby on... <sighs> Whatever happened to this 10 a.m. announcement? <laughs> it was ridiculous. <laughs> Seemed like it was going on forever. Yeah, and I'd say the nerves are starting to creep in, but we know, I think everyone kind of knew, knew it was coming, and it was just a case of just keeping calm because we knew it was going to happen. We knew this time it was different to what had been before. You know, this, it, it, you know, it had been done and dusted. We were just waiting for that confirmation, um, and everyone was keeping calm. And then, obviously, the moment it hit was just superb, and... What a pleasure just to be at the ground. I mean, I you know I get paid to be that's my job, but I'm a Newcastle fan at heart. So to be up there amongst everybody was just fantastic. And what an afternoon and just what a day. As we welcome now Newcastle United legend. No longer will he be treated like he played for Sunderland. He will be treated as he <laughs> should be as an absolute bona fide legend. Nobby Solano, how are you feeling? How are you guys? Thank you not bad, not bad. For, again for the opportunity. Well, like everybody, I believe, like all your fans, all the people from Newcastle, uh, they, you've been waiting for so long to this, this thing happened. I, I believe now everybody just waiting for, for the success of all times. You know, it will take a little bit of time. It's not a simple situation but uh, i'm i'm really glad i'm really glad for the club for the people they are they are good people you deserve it so now it's just a time to wait time to wait in and holding i'm hope so these new people get good people around you know people come direction to the club to to be successful in these times what do you think they need to do first of all to to get to a good start? I believe I believe you know like everything they need to work in inside the club, see what's exactly happened around the club. Um, like I said before, some people when I was talking, everything take a time. It's not a simple. I know you can have the all the money in the pocket, but uh, to be successful is not a simple. You cannot buy to be you cannot buy success. You need to build in success. I think you have many examples, many clubs like Manchester City, for example. They take a little bit of time to get now how the Manchester City, very competitive team, very strong team in Europe. So Newcastle probably has to take this, the same example. Uh, like, I said to, like I said to you before, money don't buy successful. But I hope so. These new people get people, you know, intelligent people, get people around the club to know very well the club, to know very well the city, to know very well the people who really like it. And after that, it, it won't be easy. It won't be easy because if you see now, it's a lot of clubs like Chelsea, like Manchester City, Manchester United. So a lot of clubs 
take a little bit of time, you know, well, like especially like mine, I, I will take always Manchester City is the best example because from nowhere now to be successful, they take a little bit of time, you know. A lot of love for you, Nobby, in the comments, as, as we well expect. Um, Andrew, I'm going to let you ask Nobby Solano a question. So long as it isn't, can you come on? Everything is black and white. <laughs> I just wanted to, I was wondering, Nobby, if you saw the scenes last night outside St. James's Park. And I mean, you know how passionate the fan base are, but just what you made of all the videos that you saw of people celebrating and the party yeah. long into the night. Like I said to you, I'm very glad. I'm glad. I'm glad for yours. I'm glad for, for the people, for the town, been waiting for that long for this 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 situation to to get the hopes to the club, to get the hopes to your fans, to people, to see the wonderful, you know, stadium, wonderful club to be successful. I believe maybe not many of you are still young lads, myself, people waiting for so long for many years. Now is the time. But like I'm saying before. It will take a little bit of time. You have to have a lot of patience. You've been waiting for so long. So waiting for a little bit more, I don't think that will affect him much. But uh, I'm not surprised. The answer, I'm not surprised to see people outside the St. James Park enjoy so much, and, uh, you know, to these people take it over. So now is the time to to hope so Newcastle can enjoy and in the future can enjoy to be successful. I think the only thing missing... Sam, I just jump in there more because it was interesting what Nobby said about building an infrastructure. My colleagues Mark and Lee spoke to a man and she was talking about a director of football. And one of the interesting things she said was um you can bring in the best sport and director in the world, but um but you have to have the infrastructure, so the medical staff, the training facilities, uh, which was really interesting because it, it kind of you know goes along with what Nobby's saying there. You can have all the money in the world, but unless you've got the, the structure, you know, it, it, it means little. So I think we can see there the plan they're putting forward that, they, they, you know, this is going to be well thought out and hopefully it's going to, it's going to pay, pay off. Yeah, go yes. on, uh, go on Nobby. No, no, no. Like I've said to you, um, with all my experience in a little bit of football, I've been coaching in the last eight years, ten years, but always I've been closer because I still have a family around Newcastle. All my child was born in Newcastle. Still, like I know quite well, even you know inside the club. But you, 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 I'm still talking to people, see what happened to the club in the last ten, fifteen years. Over, you know, with and under uh, my Ashley. You, the hopes, you know, the people got tired at one point because been waiting for so long to be successful. But like I'm saying to you, is is that's why you need the right people, the the people who will join to this club in this in this project with these people. Uh, you know, you have a lot of people know very well the club. So that's like I'm saying to you, they will take a time. But I believe if he, if he, you do the right things take a little bit of time to be successful. Like I said to you before, you can buy successful tomorrow. We can put the best money. You can put a lot of money, but it's not about that. It's about to build and everything. And the club need to like a small thing, but these people need to work. It. Like Bobby Robson said one, in one point when he take it over the team, I remember, especially in the, in the football things, he always walking inside to, to the training ground, walking to see what the people want to be in the club, don't want to be in the club and after he starts to build in the team that's the reason we have a little bit success in two three years to come back into the champions league play international tournaments so that's the, the i believe that's the right way to do you know because uh, remember the great players at the moment or the best players in the world they are busy and or they have a contract or it's not as simple to you know to engage because that's not nice i understand football is about player will look after himself Money is a lot of things now for in the football, but you need to have to be a little bit proud to go somewhere to to do your right work. You know, be, to be successful, you need to make sure who's being around because that's about. That's why players loving to play for Guardiola. A lot of players love to play for Mourinho. Love to play for you know, but it will take a time. It will take a little bit time. It will. I think the only thing missing from last night's celebrations at St. James's Park was a Nobby Solano trumpet performance. <laughs> that, was, that, that was the only thing missing. Um, Brandon, have you got anything to uh, to ask Nobby? 
Yeah, uh, actually I do. Uh, I have a question for Nobi. Uh, I'm wondering if Amanda Safely already uh, gave you a ring for, <laughs> for, for being part of the club. Because well, we would love to have you over. I mean, um, like I said to you, my friend, first of all, I'm really glad for you, for the club, for everybody. If he's coming along, like I, I was expression all the time, you know, my wish is to one day come back coaching or anything to be around the club again because I'm really engaged with yours. I really like the city for many reasons. So we'll see. The first, the, the, the more important thing now you get new people there, new owners there. So this this lady, I don't know her, but I've been hearing she's very successful women. He would like it to be successful. So I hope so. Like I said, it's a lot of maybe ex-players around. Alan Shira, I believe, is one of the, the keys, will be, for me, one of the key, you know, important people could be, come back to the club as a, he deserves it, as a, how much is for, for yours. So we, we'll see, we'll see. The more important is take a little bit of time. I think I uh, speak of uh, all the Jory fans as well, that uh, we would love to have you over there as well, next to, <laughs> next, next to Shira. Like, like, I said to, like I said before in the interview and say, please open that gate in the Northeast, no close the gate. You need uh -huh. to engage proper yardage to go play in the training ground. No to see if you're not good or not good or no. You need to open to build them to a lot of young lads want to play. So proud to play for the city, for the town and build them. That's for me, that's the main thing for, for Newcastle. You can buy players for everywhere, but you need to have identity. The club needs to have identity. Open the gate. And I think the mis uh, uh, misconceptions as well that a lot of people think of us as Jordi fans that we want to immediately changes overnight, but we, we we will be still patient and we know it's oh, not yes. going to be over in one day. So you've been waiting for like a 10, 15 years with my Ashley. Uh -huh. So waiting for a one year, two years, no, no, is not too much. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, just one final question from Liam, who's just rejoined us again, because I know you're a busy man, Nobby. And um, have, have Peru got a game today? Is that is that where you're we play? Just... We play last night qualifiers against Chile. We beat Chile Tunnel at home. So we play on Sunday again. We play Bolivia away, and we play Argentina away on Thursday. So it's no easy calendar. <laughs> it isn't <laughs> Liam what, what was your question to Nobby <clears throat> it's obviously likely that Steve Bruce is going to go so do you think the next manager that comes in will have to have a, a style that will appease the fans like I said to you I don't know if he, he will be there in football you, you you will never know nobody go to to see what happened in the future but I think like I said before you need to slowly they need to the, these people need to go in to see, I don't know if Steve Bruce was the problem, or maybe my Ashley was the problem, or you maybe the players was the problem. So everything you need to take a time. It's no, yeah. it's not as simple to get in. Said you go, you go, you go. You, after that, what you want to do? If the best managers in the world at the moment they are busy. If you see the Premier League, mm -hmm. you know, if you fancy Guardiola, or fancy Mourinho, or fancy Pochettino, or fancy Benitez, <laughs> all of many the great managers they are busy at the moment. So. I believe is you need to these people like I said before working inside the the club, see really what we like. Uh, have a plan, have a plan. Nobody's building from. You will see tomorrow on two three weeks time the team fighting for the for the title of the league or pre, for the Premier League. No, it need to will take a little bit of time. Nobby, it's an absolute joy talking to you again. And as you've got Argentina in in a few days, just make sure you tell Messi how wonderful. Newcastle is. <laughs> that's, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I will. But uh, <laughs> I will. Best, best of luck to you, Nobby, and we hope to see you in the northeast very, very soon. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. No, thank you for your time. Always, also, always, it's a pleasure. I wish, like, a, like I'm saying, if I'm not inside the club, outside the club, is still my supporting. So I will wish to yours, to the rest of this nice period with the new owner, to be successful as you will. Enjoy very much, I believe. Legend. Thank you very much. Nobby Solano there. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys. From Thank you. Peru. What an absolute hero. Um, sorry, Andrew. Um, uh, we got distracted by Solano. Um... <laughs> Don't worry. I mean, if there's one man that you can get distracted by, it's probably Nobby Solano. He looks like he hasn't aged a day since he's playing. Yeah. 
I want to know his anti-aging cream. Um, I want to ask you, Andrew, because I know I, I did say five, ten minutes and we've, we've kept you for 15, 20, so I do apologise to your That's other right. half. Um, not to you, I apologise to your other half. But um, <laughs> I want to ask you about financial fair play. Um, we've barely spent anything over the past few years. Surely there's no stopping us, whilst we've got to stay in the rules, obviously, there's no stopping us spending, say, a hundred odd million in January. Well, I've seen the reports today that, you know, they could spend up to, I think it's 190 million before anything comes into into play. I mean, I'm not clued up on financial fair play. I mean, that's what I will say. But you would imagine there is some leeway there. Um, you know, I mean, that's a lot of money to spend. And it's whether they will, will they'll actually go out and do that is the question. Because they seem to be under the impression it's going to be slow and gradual, which is the sensible approach, I think, you, you know, you can have all the money in the world, but you've got to buy in the right players. You've got to get that director of football in first and the right manager. And, and you've got to, you know, it's not just about having the money in the back pocket. Um, and January is an awkward time as well to buy, isn't it? Uh, you know, people play premiums and, you know, people are going to look at Newcastle and think, well, you've got, you've got, you know, all this money behind you. So you're not going to get anyone on the cheap. But um, I think regardless of the financial fair play and you know, the money behind them, the first, the, the first thing to, to, understand is that they'll have a plan and um we, i mean we've seen down the road at everton haven't we that they've gone out and signed good players and spent what 1.5 million and of course yeah mr benitez is talking about spending a lot of money in january but we've seen what you can do even if you have got the riches behind you you can still go out and strengthen for next to nothing which isn't always the worst idea how do you think rafa benitez is feeling now because Obviously, he's gone to Everton, you know, great club, obviously spent quite a lot of money over the past few years, but now all of a sudden Rafa's working on a budget again. So how do you think he's feeling about uh, yesterday's news? I'm sure he's happy for Newcastle because he understands what we've all been through over the last 14 years, doesn't he? You know, he worked under Mike Ashley and he was victim to it, for want of a, a better phrase. Um, so he understands... The joy and the elation, I'm sure he'd be very happy and he'd be watching on at them scenes. You know, he wanted to get back into the Premier League. I guess at the time he went for the Everton job, it really didn't look like the takeover was going to happen anytime soon. So he was probably sick of waiting for, for that job to come along, if indeed he was the first choice. And yeah, you know, it, we say he's working on a budget, but they've just got rid of um, what do you guys haven't then? He was a, he was speaking last week about how they've got ambitious owners wanting to spend. He directly referenced, uh, you know, the, the previous owners he'd worked on under, which didn't have the same uh, same approach to, to the Premier League transfer window. So I think there'll be a bit of money there to spend in, in January for Rafa Benitez. And given how he started uh, his, his his job at Everton, the flying high, I don't think he'll be too, too, too downheartened that he isn't in charge of Newcastle United under this new ownership. Um, Harry, the final question to Andrew because you know we're, we're taking the mick of his time now. The final question to Andrew goes to you, Harry. Yeah, obviously, um, you spoke about directors of football and like chief executives before. Is there anyone who you think might be interested in taking that role, or any rumours kind of linked to the well, job? We've seen, um, I think it's the former Liverpool guy linked and the former Manchester City guy linked as well. And it'll probably, um, there's always a good chance it'll be someone that really we're not really have heard of. There's always people over in Germany and France who have done well over there. Um, you know, they, they have said that they've got to get it right. They've got to choose the right person, of course, because in many ways it's as important an appointment as the manager, really, in some ways, because, you know, they're the ones who's going to make sure all three owners are connected and, and you know, they'll they'll probably have that responsibility and obviously they'll go out and look for the players and do the deal. So it's important to have someone there who can do that. But I think equally important is having just more than one man on the board. You know, I mean, Lee Charnley has his all has flaws, but goodness me, he's had it tough, hasn't he? Because he's the only man on that board. He was doing everything effectively and that doesn't help. So I think one of the really good things here is that you're going to have a board and you're also going to have someone like Jamie Rubin who has worked, uh, you know, with QPR. He understands the game a little bit and he's probably had a little word with Les Fernand as well about how crazy the fan base is and what a brilliant club this could be under the right ownership. 
you know, and his family understand as well. I think Newcastle have got so many business uh, links here, the race course as well. So I think they they will understand how passionate this city is. But I think he he actually will be key, I think, as well because of his experience. But it's just going to be good to have some sort of leadership and more than one person leading. I say that, you know, with inverted commas because it wasn't really there in the lead, Charlie. Uh, but it's it's going to be it's going to be good to see just a proper football setup because that's that's how Newcastle are going to be successful. It's not just about the manager. It's not just about improving the training ground, the facilities, buying the right players. It's the whole thing um, that was lacking before, and it's, we need that proper management structure in from top to bottom, really. Andrew, thank you so much for your time tonight. Um, apologies for keeping you a bit longer than no, I promised, no. but. Um, it's it's always great talking to you, mate. Thank you very much for coming on, and um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll speak to you again very very soon. Thanks for the invite, guys. Enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you. Cheers. That was Andrew Musgrove of the Evening Chronicle. Um, now then, I think. Oh, look at this first donation of the evening, which reminds me. Please do like and subscribe if you're new to Newcastle Fans TV. Um, hit that join button as well if you want to be a member extra uh, extra content all for a very very low monthly fee um abadi says i'm happy that this deal will add to the city of newcastle a lot of tourists and develop the facilities and services of the club yeah i mean that's the one thing we've got to look forward to isn't it liam that it, it's just going to regenerate the whole northeast well yeah <clears throat> obviously like you said there it's going to bring a lot of tourism and um, so uh, uh, if if you kind of look like what Leicester and Man City have done, they just haven't invested in the team, they've invested in the city, haven't they? Um, so hopefully we can get St James's Park looking pretty again. Do you know what I mean? Because every time you go in, you're just wondering what's going to be there. And obviously, you, you can you've seen them photos on Twitter where um, we've got a, a tiny scream in in the the the, the, the thing at half time, whatever that's called. Do you know what I mean? So I, I think my it's just... pants are bigger than that, Tally. <laughs> I think it's just going to bring a bit, of, a bit of pride back to the city because um, we haven't really had it over the last couple of years. 100%. Um, we are going to be getting on stand-up comedian Ant Young very, very soon, but I think it's time for a clip, Mr Lawler, producing in the background. Let's have a look at the clip from the fans last night. That was last night at St. James's Park. Let's welcome in Ant Young, stand-up comedian. Good evening, mate. How are you feeling? Lads, lads, buzzing me tits off. Absolutely buzzing me tits <laughs> off. Couldn't be fucking happier. Hey, like, <laughs> class. Um, so where happy. were you when you heard the news? I had been watching um, Sky Sports News all day. Uh, I turned FIFA off at about one o'clock because I couldn't concentrate on FIFA and uh, the lads so watching Keith. So yeah, um, and I burst into tears like a big baby. It was it was amazing, uh, class. Oh, you you mentioned babies. I'm not going to get you to do the baby again. <laughs> <laughs> I will in a bit. Don't worry. Um, Fucking yeah, man! And I'm buzzing the the chat. I've been in the chat. I wanted to come on with Nobby Solano. That's a coop. That was class. Um, 
And then That's fucking, what you're dealing with, mate. That's what you're dealing with. Yeah. You've got there, you've got there, Spencer in the chat there giving a big licks. How do you feel about blood money? Can I just say, Spencer, on behalf of the whole chat, fuck off. Like, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> fuck off, mate. Like, you're on Facebook, you're using Twitter. Like, it's only effective. Saudis are only affecting you because we're rich as fuck. Get out the chat and go and have a word with yourself, Spencer. You daft prick. Um, I've been dealing with that all day as well. People just telling us, like, it's blood money. Fuck off. Couldn't Honestly, like, if they're not going to listen to the leaders of the world, why are they going to listen to a 38-year-old Geordie who, who does stand-up comedy? Mate, do one. So, yeah, let's just enjoy it. Let's celebrate. Let's absolutely get on one because we deserve it. We absolutely deserve it. I mean, if you're going to talk like that, that about Spencer, I mean, have you got any parting words for Mike Ashley? <laughs> um, thanks for leaving with death free, mate. But honestly, do one. Um, yeah, to be fair, you know, I never, and I think I brought, I, I've never hated Mike Ashley. He stagnated the club, but like, I mean, he, he was never going to spend money. And I'm just glad he saw it to the, to the best people possible. And then he's fucked off. So I'm buzzing. Like, he can absolutely get the fuck. Uh, Cabbage Heed, he can fuck off soon. Yeah, man. Good day, innit? Class day. Um, it's, I seen Lee day. Chonley's tweet. Uh, Lee, Lee Chonley emailed um, the the people within Newcastle, and it literally just went. He has an email from the new manager. Kind regards, Lee Chonley. Fuck off, Lee Chonley. Like you should be buzzing your tits off for us. You can fuck off your baldy heed. Like honestly, I'm absolutely buzzing. Just buzzing. I mean, I'd say Bravo, cans, but mate. I've only got bottles. <laughs> oh no, I've got the cans as a state of mind. Um, but I mean, bravo, Mo. Thank you for your donation in the comments there. Um, can you talk about the, the amount of hate I'm seeing? I think Ant has pretty much covered that. It's yeah, good, isn't it? it? <laughs> it's class, bravo, man. Like, how much we were already hated. Nobody likes Newcastle, and the hate were even more. I love to see I, I haven't turned on Arsenal fans' TV, but I bet they're crying their little bloody eyes out. It's class. Like and and they're going to be using blood money. Arsenal will be saying it. You telling me America's got the hands clean? Why did nobody question Chelsea when Roman Abramovich took over about the Russian mafia? Like why is Shearer getting questioned about human rights? It it's it's absolutely wrong. And they're they're so bitter that they're using that to kind of block our happiness. Fuck them. Let them cry like babies. <laughs> <laughs> let them go let them go don't care i mean i mean it, it, it's funny you mentioned shearer because uh stay tuned that's all i'm saying um so well like yeah. i said i know i know alan shearer when he left the club and um, he shook hands with mike ashley mike ashley said see you in the summer shearer's on holiday and the next thing he knows he's got the boot like absolutely yeah. get shearer back I've got no... If you're telling me, let's get Frank Lampard, let's get Stevie Gerrard, I'll have Shearer over them do any day of the week. Any day of the week. As long as he doesn't bring Ian Dowie with him again. <laughs> very very good point. Um, let, let's let's talk players, managers, directors of footballs. And let, let, let's dream. Let's, who do you want to see come in, short term and long term? Um, short term. Someone said the day, and I think on your Facebook forums, and he got shot down. But the idea about bringing Keegan in till the end of the season to sign off, keep our flows, and then have a long-term manager. You know my choice. I said Jose Mourinho just because he's Bobby Robson's protege. My, my heart lies with Bobby. Um, I'd say bring him in long-term if we can, but he's just signed with Roma. Um, but yeah, have Keegan till the end of the season. His passion, his passion will keep us up alone. Um, board of directors, I've loved Warren Barton. Uh, that man's passion on Twitter has been fantastic. I'd bring Warren Barton in. Um, I definitely have Keegan. I heard them on their uh, talk sport tonight saying, like, you know, that they've been in touch with Lee Clark, uh, Steve Watson, people like that. That would be class. Get the old boys in. Um, I don't mind that one bit. And so, uh, as as for players, I haven't got a clue. But for you want to uh, bring Mourinho in, don't you? Uh, do you like his style of play as well? Who you know, Keegan's style of play? Or Jose's? Sorry. No, no uh, Mourinho's. Mourinho's style of play. Um, <laughs> probably, probably not. I think the Jordies will kick off. To be honest, um, Park and the bus too negative. But Rafa and I hate saying that name because he was mentioned too many times on Talk Sport yesterday. He played a boring style of football. Let's not kid ourselves. It was boring as hell. But we were behind him because of what he done. And I think the same would happen for any manager. 
yes, in the long term, let's go attack and let's get the ball up going back the air, shit like that, right? I'll take that long term. But in the meantime, let's just get someone in who's going to show our up and just give her that little bit of belief. I'll win a game 1-0 rather than get beat 5-4. I'm not like your normal Jordies. Um, I will take a win over looking good. I mean, I, I'd just take a win at the moment. Like I said on Sky Sports News yesterday, we've had more takeovers than wins this season. Um, <clears throat> uh, Harry, who do you... He's getting you halal to... kebab the night. What, sorry? <laughs> uh, bring Harry back in. Who do you want to uh, see as manager and uh, play as short-term and long-term? Oh, well, it's a tough one. It's um, obviously... But uh, in the in the meantime, I'd probably like to see Eddie Howe just take over immediately. Um, or as soon as possible, um, just because Premier League experience really, everyone's shouting for Gerard, um, Antonio Conte, which I think is a bit unrealistic. But um, just just Eddie Howe, someone who can keep us up, someone someone who will play the right kind of football, someone who's obviously got experience as well. As for players, I don't know, just 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 bit, just anyone who can improve the team really. That's all we ask for at the minute. Like, like, as as has probably already been exclaimed all over social media and said on here, it's like it's not about signing Mbappe or Haaland or whoever. It's just anyone who can improve the team. That's all it's about. Yeah, yeah. it is. And uh, we'll play the clip a bit later on. But um, Matt from our channel was on Five Live this afternoon, and Adrian Childs asked him. Um, who do you, let, let's dream who do you want in and then Matt was caught pretty unawares and his first choice was Max Ahrens from Norwich so, <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is the thing though when it comes to Newcastle fans the media all expect us to go batshit crazy and say we want Messi we want Mbappe yeah you know but the reality of it is Ant that we we are prepared for this patient slow build and we just want to, to try and get proper proper better players in. Yeah, absolutely bang on. I've just seen someone, I'm sorry, mate, I didn't catch your name, put in the chat, Ansu Fatty. Mate, I'd love someone like Ansu Fatty. Like, and that's the kind of names that the media aren't expecting what to see. You're right, they're expecting Haaland and Bappe. I just want a little bit of pace up front, someone who's not dog shit in defence, and someone who's better than John Joe Shelby in midfield. Like, and I'm not asking for big names. I don't want that. Don, don, Donny van der Beek. I'll take Donny. Um, he's yeah. he's getting shit on it, man. You, isn't he? Mm, all right. Yeah. And if it's... I mean, if someone like Bellingham's willing to go to like us, I'd definitely take him as well. Someone else mentioned him in the chat. Like, yeah, just good, good players. They don't have to be the world beat us. We just want to look good. All right. Yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. I mean, like, I, I'd I'd take Max Harrens because he's hell of a lot better than Emil Kraft. But um, I, I I did Mate, uh, I did find I'm better than Emil Kraft. <laughs> <laughs> well, but yeah. fuck off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I mean, last time we had you on, Anth, um, we were all very downbeat, and you know, our, our high point was going to watch the women's team. Are you looking yeah. forward to now going back to St. James's Park? Are you at the Spurs uh, game next week? I'll not get a ticket. Uh, I messaged me mate Stoney, uh, who's got a chance. I messaged me uh, me six aside football team, Lodge and Tina, to see if anyone there's got any contacts and uh, none. It's good name, man. It's Argentina. It's very because we're all fat. It's very um, good. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I can't, I can't get my hands on tickets. And realistically, with going out and working weekends around comedy clubs, my wife's told us it's not realistic for us to have a season ticket at the minute. So I'm just gonna have to go on the waiting list in a couple of years' time. And uh, yeah, just keep supporting the women because they said they're going to invest in the women as well, which is fantastic. Oh, Absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. I'd love to see us out in in the WSL. That would be fantastic. Proper investment in the women's team. Um, Absolutely agree. I mean, we, we we've got you on. Anything you want to plug? Have you got any tour dates coming up? Yeah, actually, fuck it. It's not. But this is not about me. I couldn't <laughs> give a shit about my career at the minute. This is all Newcastle. <laughs> this is everything we deserve. Um, I had a horrible gig yesterday. I was going to go to St. James's Park. I started drinking beer and my wife's like, Anthony, you've got to drive to Stockton. So I put one of the beers back. I just had two or three. Drove to Stockton. The gig got cancelled. The gig got the oh, fucking no. bastards. So by the time I got home, it was too late to join Sam Fender and the boys at St. James's Park. So um, yeah, I'm just getting on one the night. Just having a good time. I'll stick FIFA on. I'll have you lads in the background. Jobs are good. Absolute good. Oh, what a hero. I mean... Um... We've got an interview going out with um, 
a, a former Newcastle player, let's say, and there's a very funny story involving Sam Fender to come, which will all be revealed tomorrow. Um, and it's been an absolute pleasure yeah. having you on again, mate. Um, ju- just, just finally, what's going to happen for the rest of the season, and what's going to happen next season, and how many? Just, 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 what have we got to look forward to, in your opinion? Um, I think this till Christmas. We're going to struggle, but I think you'll see effort levels improve. I think there'll be a better um, bonus structure for the lads. I think they'll be offered a bit more money to win than fucking Mike Ashley was offering five pound sports direct vouchers per win. So I think there'll be more incentive for them to do better. I think from there, Christmas, we'll get two, three, maybe four players in. We'll push on. We'll finish mid table next season. I think we'll push for Europe. I probably don't think we'll get there. And then from there, who knows? Sky's the limit. Oh, that's where I'm most buzzing about as well, probably Europe. Yeah, that's Europe. what I want. Yeah. I, t- I just want to go to a European game, take uh, my daughter, and and just have a good time. Try not to get killed while I'm over there. Be belter. Well, yeah. Nice well, Brandon trip. there li- lives in Holland, so a European game is is greatly welcome for him, so he can get home for tea time. So we're stopping <laughs> at his house. Get in. Thanks for the offer, man. Uh, that's good. <laughs> you're open. My house is open, mate. I mean, get, get everyone to, over. You, you, you're going to have to share with the rest of the NFTV lads because I, I I I don't think Brandon's house is overly accommodating. But I know. Well, thank well, well thank you for thing. the well, thank you for that. <laughs> Your house oh, is man. tiny, mate. You're just basically saying that I, that I'm probably poor as fuck. That's what he, that's what, that's yeah. how I pick up Brandon. What a bastard I, he is. I I I don't know. Oh, like, but, he, yeah. but he's always on so, on about me, so you know. <laughs> I, 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 I got used to it. Go into my head. It's that oil money. It, it, it's, it's playing havoc with us already. <laughs> oh, my Man, riches. <laughs> we are rich. Uh, we are being rich yourself. All the Newcastle Thanks. fans enjoy it. We'll fucking deserve this. I'll see you later, boys. Awesome. Man. Cheer out, mate. So much. Cheer out, oh, lads. Um, he wouldn't have the plugs, but I'm gonna I'm gonna plug him. Uh, Ant Young there. Based in Newcastle, stand-up comedian. If you're in the area, go and see him live. As you as you've seen there, he's absolutely hilarious. As we welcome back Liam, um, Liam, let's get your opinion on managers and directors of football and players, short term and long term. How are you? Um, I think we're still would still be quite safe if we just kept Bruce in charge and just kept everything the way the same it is. Do you know what I mean? No, and uh, that's a proper answer. <laughs> um, obviously, in long term, you'd probably look at someone like Conte, but short term, well, short term to medium long term, you could even say to look at like Stephen Gerrard because what's more is he going to do it in Scotland because he's won the league with Rangers. The next step would be probably a Premier League team, and this is the ideal opportunity. Absolutely. Um, so. Earlier today, myself and Lee, uh, bless him, who's who's been poorly, but he managed to sum up the courage to have 10 minutes with a certain individual who I'm sure you will recognise. And we've got a clip for you now, and the full interview is out on NFTV tomorrow. So take a look at this. What's your most, what's your feelings? Tell me. Oh, I'm like you guys. I'm like the thousands that were at St. James's Park last night. My son was there with all his, uh, with all his pals. Um I mean, the place has just gone berserk, and so it should do, because for 14 years we've had nothing to cheer, we've had nothing to look forward to, we've not been involved, we've had no say. Um, So I'm absolutely delighted that um, that eventually um, our club is back in the hands of the fans, and uh, they've eventually got something to say, because they've not been listened to for far too long. And uh, Yesterday was a great day. It's going to take time. I think we all have to be patient as much as we'd all love it to be um, success immediately, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, Now we've got our club back and we've got a little bit of hope, which we've not had for a long time. Yeah. Uh, Alan Shearer on NFTV with me and Lee earlier today. Um, Full video out tomorrow, but there's a a little taster. Uh, Harry, what do you reckon? Unbelievable. Like, Like... That's incredible. <laughs> I can't stomach it. Like when I was watching that, I was just getting, I was getting shivers down my spine. Like that's unbelievable. Like I'm just, I'm just, I'm just so pleased that I'm, uh, that I know someone who is actually friends with Ellen Shader. So who's that? You, you? 
Ah, oh, I'm not friends with Alan Shearer. Don't be silly. Um, although, if he wants to be, I, I am I'm very <laughs> much up for it. Um, but <laughs> there, you, there you go. Um, you've put me off my train of thought now, Brandon. Sorry, um, sorry. Yeah, I mean, just <laughs> how <laughs> big is how big is this um, for someone like Alan Shearer, Liam? Because he's been massively shat on by the previous regime. Well, it, it, it probably is massive. Do you know what I mean? He had a bar named after him. Obviously, Shiraz Bar, which is nine, now nine bars. So the first thing that we should do is change that back to Shiraz Bar. Um, obviously, he can be a club ambassador now because obviously he probably didn't want to do it under Ashley. If you look at like, Liverpool, like how many club legends they've got as ambassadors, it, it would just make the whole club a lot better and positive if we had Alan Shearer as a, a um, ambassador for the club. Um, and obviously... It, it, it's just a surreal thing, isn't it? Like you, you just overcome with emotions and you don't know what to say because you're just rambling on, but it's it's just brilliant. Everything's just class. Do you know what I mean? Like last week when we got, who did we, who did we lose against? Wolves or Wolves? Yeah, it, it, miserable as I would do in this with Brandon's dodgy scores. And then like now <laughs> news of interview Chira, like the richest club in the world. Do you know what I mean? You just kind of, you just kind of explain it. I mean, if you'd have said to me, uh, who was at the Wolves game with me last week? So it was me, Lee, Johnny, Carl, Carl. Chris, Carl's brother. Um, if you'd have said to us when we were stood outside Molyneux after to watching that dire display that, A, that was the last game under Mike Ashley. Uh, B, you go the next game you go to will be Spurs at home and uh, it's going to be just... I've never looked forward to a game as much as I have. In, in years and years and years. But if, you, if you'd have told us what was about to happen then, we, we wouldn't have believed you. I'd have called you thick. But it, it's just crazy how fast it all snowballed in the end, wasn't it? Um, Harry, I'll come to you on this one. It's exactly how we wanted it to play out, really, because no one knew until less than 24 hours before it was confirmed. Yeah, you didn't even have time to think about it. Like, it was literally one thing, one thing from the next, the next, the next. And it was just absolutely crazy. Like, no no one even knew. Like, I, I'm struggling for words because it, it's just, I'm still in shock. It's unbelievable how quickly this all happened. We've gone from waiting for 18 months to getting it done in, what, 30 hours? Like, it's just incredible. It, it, it's hard to speak about because there's just not the words there. It's too emotional. I guess I guess this is where we've all been talking about, right? That we just wake up someday and it's just there and it's gonna be happening in like, you know. It still feels like a dream. Uh, yeah. For sure. Yeah, like like I'm 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 not gonna stop smiling for weeks. It's mental. <laughs> like like I genuinely. I mean, it, it has has it so I will we'll go we'll go around around the room. Has it properly sunk in yet? Mm, don't think so. Not no. yet. That no. bit. No, it, it, it hasn't for, for me either. I mean, one person who was getting emotional um, yesterday on screen was Keith Downey, who broke the news. And um, on Johnny and Lee's travels last night, um, Johnny managed to catch up with Keith Downey for a few words. Here it is. Yeah, it's been a crazy day. It really has. Um, can't, I can't believe, actually, we're standing here talking about this after all these years of reporting on it and months of wondering if it's going to go through or not. Um, it's been This has been a, a, a really, really mad day. And all my, my fellow reporters I've spoken to who've been up here at different stages, we've all just looked at each other and just gone, crazy day. And, and, it's, and it's just felt like that. It's been it's been really, really good to feel part of. I'm pleased for you guys that, that you're happy. Um, I got a little bit emotional myself earlier because... Um, I mean, I'm not a Newcastle fan, but I've covered the club for a, a long time. And when we were doing the live, updating the, that it was almost there, and then when we broke the news that the takeover was done, we actually could hear people down down behind us at St James's Park, down near the Bobby Robson statue, shouting and roaring at everything we said. And it was just, it just was, it was just a really, really emotional moment. And it, it kind of just kind of made me realise how much it, it meant to everyone. And it just kind of actually made me feel a little bit upset. And I thought, God, what, what's going on here? But I think, I think that's just what happens when you when you report on a story of this magnitude. You realise importance to everyone else. And then it kind of made me feel a bit like that. So, um, so yeah, it was a bit weird. But listen, it's it's great. As I said. Earlier, where we've we stood in we stood here so many times um, looking over the stadium, talking about negative negative stuff all the time in front of the stadium, uh, time and time again, freezing cold in the dark, and yet here we are 
and for once it's a it's a joyful moment and everyone's happy and if I'm honest with you mate, if I'm honest with you in my time covering this club I never thought it would probably arrive I mean did did any of us and I'm including everyone watching did did any of us really think this day was going to arrive really? at some point obviously but not this year actually I mean I think obviously I think obviously we've just been in this position so many times where we've been oh it's it's 24 hours away and then 24 hours comes and then it's like we've been in this position so many times I don't think anyone could actually believe it but then obviously you do stop believing it and so you're getting hyped up and then then obviously the news broke and I think every, the whole of the North East just well the whole of the Newcastle just went wild do you know what I mean yeah like it's it's easy to say that like it was going to happen one day but the day that it happens, you, you don't expect you don't expect the emotion, you don't expect the true feeling of the take. Like it, it, it just once it hits you, it's something completely different. It's it's a completely different level, and I'm sure everyone's experiencing that still right now. It is, um, Lee. Let's get some uh, viewer comments up before we um, move on to talk about the uh, the emergency meeting from the the bitter nineteen, which I'm. Uh, going to refer to them as. Um, Craig <clears throat> Craig had written it off. It still feels surreal. Absolutely spot on. That's it. I mean, we were all sick and tired of talking about it, but Adrian, I'm a bit scared of how quickly this escalated. Seems shady when you look at it, but I I, I, I say qu quickly how it escalated. It's been going on in the background for, I think, months, months. Dave, we said. So, you know, but and I think it was done the right way. And like I said earlier, that we didn't know until less than 24 hours before. Get Shearer's statue on stadium grounds. Despicable how Ashley didn't allow that. We put, we asked, um, we talked to Alan about that tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. Um, if Newcastle get the same investment as City, they will be a top four club. City weren't right. Was it, I mean, I, I failed to remember. When City first got took over, it took them a couple of years to get top four, didn't it? It's because they had Mark Hughes as manager, didn't the first season? They tried to buy like every yeah. Premier League striker because they bought like Rocky Santa Cruz at one point. And I think there was like the, the whole of the forward line was just from different players. Do you know what I mean? So, um, but then obviously I think they sort of get it like because it was Mancini, I think, wasn't it? That really brought the success in. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, he won the first title with them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when when they first got took over, they they kind of bought like your Wayne Bridges of this world and. I yeah. think Robin Robinho was their marquee sign, wasn't it? But Robinho yeah. thought he'd signed for Chelsea. Do you remember that? He didn't even know there was another club in Manchester. <laughs> yeah, he did an interview say, and he slip at Freudian slip. He said, "I'm very something along the lines of very happy to sign for Chelsea." And then the interviewer said, "No, you've signed for Manchester City." But uh, yeah, <laughs> um, Liam, what do you make of this emergency board me uh, board meeting from the other uh, Premier League clubs today? Um, reading, I was just reading the article then, and it, it's obviously too late for them to actually do anything now. We're obviously, we're being taken over by the PIF, so there's nothing they can really do there. But I think the the more want to know is how it went through so quick, essentially, or without little friction. And I think they obviously want to know, <clears throat> um, is the obviously Saudis they haven't got the best reputation if that's going to have an impact on the, the brand of the Premier League? So it, it's essentially people just bit out of that it wasn't them that's, that's all i'm gonna say like who cares obviously, obviously every billionaire has the the skeletons in the closet don't they allegedly allegedly save you, allegedly i'll save you a lawsuit there but um, <laughs> but yeah you're probably right <clears throat> um i mean today of course uh, murdad and uh, amanda stavely arrived at st james's park i mean fantastic i mean you would have all seen the photos uh doing the rounds on twitter and how nice it is it seems like the club staff as well have been liberated because yeah. there's there's genuinely brilliant social media posts there by um grant pringle there's Serena Taylor is always a brilliant photographer, and the the photo of Murdad and, and Amanda Stavely at St James is just is framed beautifully to cut out the Sports Direct crap. <laughs> and, and and what a day that'll be because I think um, George Colkin tweeted today that the Sports mm. Direct yeah, stays on around the stadium is due to stay short term. I think they'll short do a video to come in. I think the video would coming down. I agree. Can they do oh, yeah. something about it if the fans take it down themselves? 
<laughs> kind of yeah, I think so. Um, can, I, yeah. can, can I just say, sorry, can I just say quickly while um, we're on the topic of social media, it was just immense to see the cha- the immediate change of guard kind of after the takeover happened. Like the Newcastle Twitter, as soon like as soon as it was announced or whatever, the fact that they retweeted Shearer's tweet just speaks volumes. Because uh, the um, yeah. the relationship between him and the club had been so tarnished, you would have never seen that when Ashley was owner, and the fact that it was so soon after the takeover and the re- like it's it's a silly thing, like it's just retweeting a tweet, but it means so much to everyone just because of the sheer, you know, relationship. Like it's it just means everything, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, you you're absolutely spot on. Um, and and I think that there's there's as I was saying to someone today that there's so many good people working in the, in the club. It's it's they they probably feel just as as we are like 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 an Independence Day sort of scenario. Um, so it it's brilliant for everyone. Um, I got a scenario though. Imagine imagine if if Bruce stays on for the rest of the January, let's say. Do you think he will actually open up in an interview about Ashley and his time? How he sort of felt like during having to deal with Charlie Ashley. Would that no. raise more sympathy? Would that raise more sympathy though? No, if he opens up, I think you can see by like former players' reactions that they don't actually slag um, Ashley off. So I don't know whether there's a, like a non-disclosure agreement there, or it seems like no one really wants to go fully in on Ashley. No, I, the only person to have done that is Keegan because he took him to court. No one else has has done that, have they? That it's yeah. always just been kind of sly li- li- little digs here and there. No one's actually gone fully in on Mike Ashley, have they? And, and proper criticised and and said what the, what the dealings were or lack of dealings. Um, Speaking of your point, though, Brandon, we have another clip, don't we, Lee? Uh, Stave Lee speaking about Steve Bruce today. As I said earlier, uh, you know, today, you know, all those questions are time questions for for uh, the next month. It is not a question for today. Uh, we've just got here. We like to do a review, as we've indicated before, uh, and we'll come back to you with all those points. Yeah, but I, I want to know them now. Um, <laughs> Liam, is Steve Bruce going to be in the dugout a week on Sunday? Um, no. I think it'll potentially it'll be Graham Jones short, very short term and then I think it'll be somebody else after that. I think um, I think it'll just make the fans a lot happier if Bruce, Steve Bruce isn't there. And like you said earlier, we've had more wins than, we've had more takeover than wins, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Sam? So I think it just you. I, I wouldn't have been too bothered about Bruce staying on if he had actually done well at the club. Um, like, but he hasn't. It it comes down to his tactics and he's playing players in the wrong position. Like we played Joe Linton. Uh, Joe Linton is a alone centre forward for like a year and a half. It just sort of says it all. He's a dinosaur. He needs to retire. Go to Portugal for the rest of his life. Do you know what I mean? Well, he won't be taking a holiday this international break, or or maybe he will an extended one. Who knows? <laughs> um, Brandon, uh, same question. What's your prediction? Will Bruce be in the dugout against Spurs? I actually have a feeling that they just will let him have his thousand uh, mm. game as his uh, manager. But uh, after that, I think he uh, will get the sack. Uh, I think something like this along the lines will happen. But I hope I'm wrong, though. Yeah, I mean, do we, do we, Harry? Do we have time for them to be nostalgic and let Bruce have his one thousandth game? I don't know, but I, uh, I don't probably not. But I think, yeah, who are they gonna appoint? Uh, Graham Jones. Uh, I think they want to have some time to to find the the right candidate yeah, to be well, fulfilling that new manager role. Talk sport. I seen it's Gerard. I wouldn't be Gerard. Have, yeah, odds on Gerard have massively slipped, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't take much in them sort of markets to move a price. But would he? Would he? Would he be your choice, Harry? I, I wouldn't mind it, as I've as I've said a couple of times. I would take Eddie Howe, but I wouldn't mind Gerard. You know, it's it's a similar kind of appointment. Obviously, he's got less experience, but he's got probably got more know how about football and how he's got more, say, passion, leadership, um, and 
there's probably a connection there in some sort of way with the owners um, and Gerard. And like, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind it. As I say, probably wouldn't be my first choice, but I'm not against it at all. As long as someone relatively young and who wants success and who can challenge and who's competent, you know, we don't want another dinosaur. Um, someone competent. That'll do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> competent. That's, that's I mean, that'll do. That's, that's literally <laughs> it. Like we've we've got billions in the bank, but as long as someone knows what they're doing and can keep it in the league at least this year, then that's fine, and we'll move on from there. It's 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 not all about spending all the money. Like it is about spending all the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I say, it will be in two in years' time. time. Yeah, the people in charge of spending that money, it would seem, along with Jamie Rubin, is uh, Murdad and Amanda Stavely. They arrived at St. James's Park today. We have a clip for you. Go, Lee. You know, we've, got, we've, got a, we've got a big project ahead of us. Patience. It's going to take time, but we're going to get there. So we're excited. It's a new era. So we're very excited for the club and for the club. Look, there's a lot of things to do. Uh, we're just going to take it there step by step. Um, you know, it's our first day here in the club. There's a lot to do. We're going to look at things and uh, take everything day by day. I was impressed the first day we walked into St. James' Park four years ago. I thought he's been yeah, yeah, I can't really tell you why. I'm, we're so excited. Well, obviously, we have plans in place, but uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a moving scenario. We've got to take our time. We've got to look at everything and make decisions that are right for the club. Oh, it's amazing. Yes, I'm just so good. Thank you very much for everything and the, uh, we're so excited. Well, the plans, we're going to come back to you very soon with all our plans and uh, we're just going to go and meet with everybody we want to meet with all the staff and, and uh, we're going to come back to you soon. We will come back to you with all questions on, on Steve and everything else in the in soon. I was celebrating a little last night. I had a drink. So thank you very much. And thanks, guys, and we really appreciate all the support we've had. Just our sincerest thank you. We just go and do this. We just are so grateful. Both my dad and I are I so grateful. For all <laughs> we love, we love we you guys. Love you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very coming. much. Oh, it's very, very kind. Thank, thank you, very guys. Much. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Love you, Amanda. Really she was <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Amanda. Um, I mean, look, oh, as Lee rightly captioned there, oh, Mandy, she stuck this out for f nearly four years. Yeah. Uh, how? Why? What tenacity? What patience? What grit? What determination? I mean, <laughs> what, what a person, yeah. Lee. Yeah, well, uh, I think... A couple of weeks ago, I think Gary Neville, um, when I think all the fans from different clubs were there, it said that once Newcastle get taken over, they'll rock it. And I think she can see we're just essentially just a sleeping giant. Because I think, obviously, we've got the stadium and we've got the fans. It's just the actual people that actually need to, we need to do something, needs to do something. Do you know what I mean? Like, we need the right play and stuff. And I think she could see 300 million for a club of this size is a, is a snip, really. Well, yeah, that, that, that's a good point. I mean... Harry, it almost feels weird, doesn't it? Because we've had more communication from Amanda Stavely in the past 24 hours than we've had nearly 14 years of Mike Ashley. It's, it, it's a bit surreal, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's almost as if they care about the fans and the club. Like, <laughs> <I know>. like, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Like, As you say, more communication in that, from them in the past 24 hours than Mike Ashley in 14 years. Like, You, you can't make this stuff up. It, like... I'm just, yeah, I'm lost for words. Like, unreal. Uh, as oh yes, love the love this caption. So many, I mean, look, look at this. Just list of disgusting filth. Um, this is just a small snippet of what Mike Ashley did. I mean, I don't want to reminisce about that waste of skin, but um, look, this is a, a snippet of what we've had to put up with for the past 14 years the treatment of the likes of Keegan and, and Shearer and uh, Ryan Taylor and Jonas Gutierrez battling back from cancer and saving us from relegation against West Ham on the last day of the season um, Gutierrez was another one actually who took Ashley to court wasn't he um, Shea Given who if he'd have not been forced out and if he'd have stayed another season he would have been the all-time record appearance holder for Newcastle United 
and he still hasn't had a testimonial and he was there for 12 years. That, that, that just seems wrong to me. I mean, you look back at the, uh, that famous night of Shearer's testimonial and, and Shea Given, Liam, certainly deserves something on a par with that, doesn't he? Well, yeah, he's obviously arguably the greatest ever goalkeeper I'd ever play for Newcastle, so you would have thought 12 years of service would have mainly got a testimonial, but obviously he, I think he, Shea Given could have seen the writing was on the wall or he got pushed out, so that's it's it's just sort of Mike Ashley all over. He's not very good at the PR sort of stuff, is he? Do you know what I mean? Like that that given she given a, a, a testimonial would have probably brought some of the fans back on side at the time, but it, it just wasn't given. So Yeah, no, it's all right. I was freezing there for a moment, so I was waiting <laughs> to come back. I just seen I your mean, eyes. Look, to be fair, I've lasted an hour and five minutes without my internet lagging, which is which is fantastic. I mean, that's, that's longer than the average length of a normal Greenwood and Mulliner show, which I would have got away with. Um, but it had to happen at some time. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, given give just an absolute hero, wasn't he? And, and look, that's just a small snippet of, of what we've had to put up with. That just like like Nobby was saying at, at, the, at the top of the show. We want them to open the gates now, communicate, not close the gate, open the gates, you know, and that's exactly what it looks like Amanda Stavely's doing. Um, the sports direct advertising is the big one for me uh, and, and the club shop, which is obviously now not a sports direct, it's a Castor, it's a Castor store. Um, so the sports direct advertising, as you say, how many people watched the cap case again? It was like 33,000. I, I think it was treble that mm. if they live streamed the sports direct marketing coming down. Mm-hmm. The cap case got more got more viewers than Sunderland have had this season. Then, then Sunderland fans have been in the stadium this season. <laughs> yeah, that was it. It was a record for the cap cases as well, wasn't it? Yeah. It was a record at yeah. record like, viewership. Like, or whatever. Over fifty from over fifty countries, people actually viewed and watched this case. Can you imagine? And and it, and it is uh, Candy saying on Talksport that that we're not a big club. He says we are big only in Newcastle, but. He probably has his arse stuck up in his uh, of his head stuck up in his arse because he don't know we we are global. He probably yeah. don't know it or whatever. I mean, with talk sport, they just want they just clickbait, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? They're, they're the, uh, one of the most controversial the things that, that that's going. Do you know what I mean? Uh, that's why I love putting them on the page because everyone seems to view them and bite. Do you know what I mean? So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I, I saw last night on there actually. I'm, I, I think it was one of the clips you got on. Was it Jason Cundy saying Newcastle have yeah, no yeah. history? Yeah, yeah. The guy yeah. works for Chelsea yeah, TV and played for Chelsea. He, he says that um, I mean, Chelsea, Chelsea won more in the nineties than that Liverpool did. Didn't didn't, didn't they just win? What did it, was it just the FA Cup? I don't know. I don't know. He didn't stay which cup did they, won. Or did they win the Cup Winners Cup as well. I can't remember. My Chelsea history isn't amazing. But, um, I think Lee uh, seeing Cup Winners Cup. Cup Winners Cup still beat you to it. Neither um, is Chelsea's yeah, history, but, though. This <laughs> is not amazing in itself, is it? Yeah. Yeah. But, but then I think because one of our fans was on, he said without Roman Bramovich, you two wouldn't, you, you wouldn't have had a yeah, t- two and Champions League final. in the 90s. But, well. Yeah, there is that. Um, look, let's put uh, another clip on Lee. Let's go to the news breaking yesterday, and um, Sky Sports News wanted some reaction, so naturally they uh, they came to NFTV. So, uh, Lee, play the play the clip of a familiar face. Newcastle is under new ownership. Let's get some views on that. We can speak to Sam Mulliner of Newcastle Fan TV, who joins us now. So I've got to ask you, how do you feel? I don't know whether to laugh or cry. This is 14 years of Mike Ashley, and now four years Amanda Stavely's been trying to buy Newcastle with his consortium. Wow, just speechless. We've finally got our club back. I mean, you can say that, okay, Newcastle are now one of the richest clubs on earth. I mean, that's all well and good, but it's about much more than that for the city of Newcastle and the supporters. It's about rebuilding relationships between the fans and the club and and legends like Kevin Keegan and Alan Shearer. There's a lot of her from the previous regime that 
this new this new ownership can can resolve pretty easily. Um, we've had a statement from Newcastle. The, the words that um, that spring out are patient and long term. Are the fans prepared to be patient, or do you want it and do you want it now? No, we are fully prepared to be patient. I mean, we are. There's a common misconception that we expect to be challenging for titles every year, and we should be in the Champions League. And now we're going to sign on Mbappe and Messi and all that carry on. Look, first and foremost, we have to stay up this season, as Keith Downey rightly said before the break. There, we're 19th in the Premier League. Um, there's there's work to do this season, um, but on the positive side. This is the start of a journey, a journey that the fans want to be a, a big, big part of. And it, it's, it's so nice to have hope back and some positivity around the football club again. It's been so dearly missed. Isn't that the key? Hope is a great word. Is that what Newcastle fans just haven't had over these last 14 or so years? Absolutely. When all you're doing is just... just being a football club for football club's sake and not really competing and just doing what's good to get by and it, it, it's it's so depressing and you can tell that from the, the areas of the club like St James's Park doesn't shine as much as it used to it needs a lick of paint it needs a facelift and there's so many other areas of the club that like that it, it, it's it's the whole atmosphere that's represented 14 years of, of neglect really and I know there are there are teams and clubs worse off than and that have been worse off than Newcastle but look it, it's such a relief and it, it almost doesn't seem real you've got to pinch yourself that this is finally happening and Mike Ashley has gone yeah well it is real Sam um, so you've got your hope back so what do you hope for um, what do I hope for? Sh short term, we need to <laughs> stay up, for one. Um, we obviously need to change a manager. Um, obviously, Steve Bruce is like all the other managers under the Ashley regime that hasn't had the correct support, but I think Steve Bruce knows the writing's on the wall, that the performance is on the pitch and the things that he can control have not been good enough. So a change of manager is urgently needed. Um, I want to see relationships rebuilt, as I said before, with club legends. I want to see Kevin Keegan in an ambassadorial role. I want to see Alan Shearer have whatever he wants. I want to see Les Ferdinand back as director of football. I want to see the good old days. You've had Warren Barton and Rob Lee on um, earlier today who know exactly what it means um, to be not from Newcastle, but to be a part of Newcastle United. Um, and and they, they should have roles in there as well. Um, there's a lot of quick wins for this, for this new ownership, and I'm, I'm sure they're fully aware of that. Any sympathy for Steve Bruce? Uh, yes, to a point. Um, the performances on the pitch and playing players out of position and dodgy formations, that I have no sympathy with because that is Steve Bruce's doing and it's not been good enough. I mean, we've had more takeovers than wins so far this season, um, <laughs> which is pretty crazy. But look, I have sympathy that he wasn't backed properly in the summer. He's put all of his eggs in the Joe Willock basket which is fine, great signing, um, one for the future, um, as well as, you know, good age, English, 21 years old, to build a team around with the likes of Alan St. Maximin. But, you know, when you're struggling not even to bring players in on loan on deadline day, that side of things, I, I obviously have sympathy with Steve Bruce for, but I, I, I think he's been around long enough and, and history tells us when managers are present during a takeover, they don't really last too long afterwards. Sam, um... There have been, of course, um, worries about human rights issues. Do you have some reservations? Look, I get, I, get, I get that. And there's probably a conversation to be had about that in the future, but today is not that day. Today is about the scenes at St James's Park and we've got our club back and we've got fresh hope. And, and that, that is what today is all about. I mean, as I say, there is a conversation to be had and things are going to be highlighted in the future, and that's for the future. But today, it's all about celebrating and the, uh, the hashtag, hashtag cans trending on Twitter, as I'm sure it will be very soon. Well, Sam, I'll let you enjoy your celebrations. I'm very happy for you. Thanks ever so much for taking time to speak to us. Thank you very much. That was a handsome man on Sky Sports News yesterday. Um, <clears throat> I saw a very interesting... Um, comment in the comments as it were please do keep your comments coming in 
about as Ashley made a statement. He did an interview in the sun last night, I think it was, um, saying he, he rejected a higher offer in order to persist with this th bid because it was more financially sustainable long term. <coughs> but for the good of the club. Um, Liam, do you think that's bullshit? Uh, no, I, I don't actually think. I, I don't think he does. I think. Um, I think obviously he's seen the potential of the stable, so you wouldn't have had them hanging hang around for four years. You know what I mean? So yeah, it, it's good in a way, but it's, it's like you said. I, I do semi believe it and don't believe it at the same time. Do you know what I mean? So it's an interesting one. But um, Mike actually just does whatever Mike actually wants. You know what I mean? He's a multi billionaire, so he he can he can do what he wants essentially. <laughs> Um, but what I was going to say is, I don't know if Brandon or Harry want to get involved. Is what players from the current team do you think you would do? You, do you think would you would you keep? Hey Sam, Dubravka. No shit. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Will, Will, Wilson. Good up, Willick. Yeah, Willick. And I just want to have uh, Paul Dommett as well around just for uh, the amazing tweet he put out on uh, on uh, Twitter yesterday. Yeah. What What about you, Harry? Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a good <laughs> question. It's a good like it. It depends what the ambitions are for January and obviously for next summer. But like, I, and it obviously also depends on the manager you bring in because if you bring in a good manager. You might get to see a lot for, more from Miggy. You might get to see um, a lot, a lot more from Willock, like he was at the end of last season. Not, not, not that you expect that, but like, again, it just it it depends who comes in and out, and like, yeah, I, I guess, I'd, 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 I'd I, I, like I, to see, I'd like to see a refreshing defense in the fullback areas. Definitely, that's the main area of improvement for me. And then we need a backup striker as well, obviously. Yes, yeah, so speaking of I forgot Brandon. to mention as well, uh, Isaac Hayden. Mm. I would keep him as well at the team. Yeah, yeah what, 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 well. I was, what I was going to say is obviously we're speaking about the full backs. Do you think Jamal Lewis will play? Well, he needs to play because he hasn't obviously started, the, he hasn't started any games or played in minutes. Do you think obviously under the right manager, we could probably see the best out of uh, Willis, uh, Lewis? Yeah, no, ab absolutely. Him. Absolutely. Like, we, we we need someone who can get it right with him because obviously Bruce yeah. hasn't. Um, he's he's looked a shadow of it, of his former self, um, like he did at Norwich, and yeah, we we just need someone who can get the best out of him. Playing Richie at left back is never going to be the answer. So if we do carry on playing with the back four, which I assume we will, um, you've got to get Lewis in because he's he's our only left back, to be honest, yeah. and like he's he's the only option. Fifteen million pounds. It's not cheap for a left back these days, so yeah. you got to make it work. Unless you're going to spend twenty, thirty mil on a new left back, like, yeah, he's got to be the future. Just, just while we're talking about transfers, do do you think? So, where's the key for January? What position do we need to strengthen the most in January? Defense, centre back, right back. Centre backs don't score goals. So, <laughs> what do you mean? So, 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 so I won't, well, so, saying so, that the, the other season, didn't they? Centre backs and, and, and the defence were, were the ones scoring all of our goals. Yeah. No, but they're not even doing that at the moment. Shaw's not pinging them in against Burnley again. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the Shaw's not playing, is he? Yeah. Nah. Um, the the priority should be to definite as as Liam says rightly so. Um, centre backs don't score goals. Obviously, they have done for us, but you'd like to think we'd be playing better football under a new manager by January. So you want to see a new forward, new uh, backup to the forward line, who are not going to be just sitting on the bench. They're going to be rotation options. Are going to be competing with Callum Wilson, maybe not ASM because you know he's he's the star man. But you want to see competitors on the bench. You want to see people who are going to challenge to be in that first team. Um, being signed in January, and obviously strengthening to the defence as well would not go amiss. 
It's it's likely that ESM is going to stay now, isn't it? Because obviously there was rumours that well, he did an interview saying if they didn't get any ambition, he would be off. But obviously we're now the richest club in the world, so I think we've got the probably most ambition out of any club at the moment. Do you know what I mean? Well, hopefully, I think hopefully the the, the dream would be beating Man City to a Champions League. Do you know what I mean? But <laughs> that may be a bit off in the future. <laughs> Yeah, my internet's lagging again, which is hilarious and annoying and brilliant. But um, what I do want to get in bef- before we wrap up um, is Matt's clip when he was on Five Live this afternoon. Um, and I've spoiled the punchline already if you were watching earlier um, about um, his number one transfer target. But um uh, Matt was on Adrian Charles's Radio 5 live show along with the athletic George Colkin, who obviously number fantastic journalist in the in the northeast and um, been close to this deal throughout. Um producer Lee, take it away, please. Just Hello. stay with us. Uh, Matt Livingston uh, joins us from Newcastle Fans uh, TV. Matt, uh, what would you add to what you've heard so far? Uh, well, I'm happy to echo um, pr- pretty much everything that I've heard so far. You know, it, we have the right to celebrate as Newcastle fans seeing the back of Mike Ashley as an owner, uh, whilst also holding the new owners to account. At that same time, it is not the fans' responsibility to tackle those issues. That buck stops with the Premier League and other governing bodies who have the power, have the swing to say, no, this take-o- we won't pass this takeover because of these issues. I understand that the, the human rights issues may or may not be part of that fit and proper owners test but as i think it was george says earlier yes they should be um and the, it doesn't just stop with newcastle united you know we've got a world cup in qatar next year we've got f1 racing mm-hmm. in saudi arabia abu yeah. dhabi and bahrain and they've got um we race as one as their their slogan you know mm-hmm. inclusive of lgbtqi plus people mm-hmm. of black people of everyone and then they race in these countries that don't have equal human rights. Yeah. It just it spits in the it spits okay. in the face of fans, mm-hmm. and it's an issue that needs to be mm-hmm. tackled with the organisations higher up. In my opinion. Mm-hmm. I mean, what Mike Ashley's crime was not spending enough money, basically. But that, that... Mike Ashley's crime, I think a lot of fans would say, would be running this club backwards. Uh, it's not okay. it's not about the lack of investment. It's it's the toxicity and okay. the, the lack of trust between ownership and fans. You know, he took over the club um, 14 years ago. We were relegated twice from the Premier League in that time. Um, we'd never been relegated from the Premier League before then. Before then, a third of our mm-hmm. total relegations have come under a 14-year spell under Ashley. Okay. He tr- they treated legends of the club like Shearer and Keegan like they were dirt under his shoe. Uh, Gutierrez came back from uh, but battled cancer, saved us from relegation, and then was let go by a text message by the club. You know, treatment of players, uh, players and staff at the club has not been up to scratch. Mm-hmm. He's backed managers like McLaren, who got us relegated. Pardew was given an eight-year contract for no reason mm-hmm. whatsoever. Steve Bruce has been given more time and money than managers like Chris Hutton and Rafa Benitez, who seem to care about the club, seem to care about the soul mm-hmm. of the club and the fans themselves. Okay. You know, I saw an interesting tweet this morning. You know, our first scorer under Mike Ashley was Charles and Zogbia, managed by Sam Allardyce, and our last scorer was Jeff Hendrick under Bruce. And that shows the lack mm-hmm. of investment, the lack of drive. You know, academy players yeah. are leaving the club before they get a chance in the first team because of the pull of bigger clubs, because of the lack of investment mm-hmm. in the club. Okay. Our training equipment has been there since the 90s when Sir Bobby mm-hmm. Robson introduced it. And you look at clubs like Leicester, who have got a brand new training complex for mm-hmm. those players because they are now in a position to attract those players. Mm-hmm. Steve Bruce has been trying to sell this club, or so he says, for years now. As fans, we'd have had about 10 years ago, but we don't have that yeah. kind of pull, right. which is why we're a bit hopeless when it comes okay. to new owners. I just want That's you all like, to play yes. fantasy football then. This money, just give us... I want. Don't, 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 I don't want answers like, let's sort the training ground out. I want proper fantasy football thing, the kind of thing you really want, right? So, uh, go on, George. Who, 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 who do you want to bring in? Well, I, um, I apologise for being a journalist, but yeah. um, or for being serious, but I'm probably the last person you should ask that because <laughs> right. it, it isn't it isn't going to happen. I mean, that isn't going to happen. So, okay. um, so I'm 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 sort of making. So um, they really are going to sort but, the infrastructure out before they start. Well, no, no, so. because even even with that, so there will be money to spend in January. There will be mm-hmm. money to spend in the summer. Mm-hmm. But I've, I've interviewed Amanda Staveley as, as uh, overnight, and she sort of said, when it comes to people like Neymar and Bappi, that's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Certainly not. Cer- certainly not for now. Uh, but the, you know, the, the, the point is, and I know that this is a bit mm-hmm. of a boring answer. What they're saying is everything is about, uh, you know, a process, a process-driven mm-hmm. uh, thing. That it is an investment, but they're going to invest slowly. And 
with a new training ground, for example. Again, I know you've said don't mm. say that. No, no, that okay. will take years. That will take years yeah. to get sorted because it's not okay. planned. It's not planned. It's not yeah. designed. Blah blah blah. Okay. So they're going to do it sensibly, and you know, you can't just you can't just bring in uh, Neymar mm-hmm. to play alongside Jeff Hendrick. That just won't work. No. <laughs> you know, so okay. so they they will do it sensibly, mm-hmm. and it's about getting the right people in the right positions first. Okay. That's going to be the big test. Thanks, George. Uh, look, George has got the right to be sensible. Um, I'm not allowing it to the rest of you. I just want you to thanks, Carl. Matt, what's uh, what's your uh, what's yours? Uh, well, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'll, I'll agree with George that the investment elsewhere comes yeah, first. Yeah, but yeah, just yeah, yeah. I know that. But come on, you're a fan. Okay. Now, come on. Who? Um, I think the the investment has to be in the fullback region, so I'd probably go for Max Ahrens from um, Norwich City. Young, oh, come young on, uh, he's great. I've met him, lovely lad, great player. But he can do better than that. What about you know, Andy Robertson or something? Come on, uh, you can go shoot um, higher. Actually, you're not you're not going to get a level out of me there. There's got to be slow investment in oh, January for me. Keep us in the Premier League oh, this the year. Game's and then maybe the next... game's gone. The game's gone at a time like this. <laughs> at a time like this, the one of the richest people in the world takes over your club, and you want Max Ahrens from Norwich? I do. Come on. Max Aaron from Norwich. Why not? Why not? I mean, perfectly reasonable assessment. I love what. Well, I say I love. What really irritated me about Adrian Charles, the presenter during that, is interrupting the end of his interviewee's answer. If you noticed, and he kept, he kept, he kept making like old man noises during the answers, like mm, yeah, mm, mm, yeah, 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 mm, mm, mm. and it was very, it, it just. Something I noticed and, and mildly irritated me. Um, what I did enjoy in that clip was um, George's rep, Harry, when he said you can't buy Neymar to play alongside Jeff Hendrick. Why? It'd be hilarious. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine that you buy Mbappe and Neymar and have Hendrick and like, Emil Kraft in the same team. <laughs> Imagine <Yes>, that. <laughs> That's what dreams are made of. I mean, what it is what dreams are made of. I mean, my word. Um, Jamie Rubin, who um, left QPR not so long ago to to take up this role at Newcastle, and um, not forgetting, of course, who's director of football at QPR, just uh, Sir Les Ferdinand. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm sure that's not a coincidence. Um, but Jamie Rubin said, we look forward to a great future for Newcastle United. Newcastle is a fantastic city, which is why our family has been investing heavily in the area for many years. To become part of this great club and its amazing fans is a privilege. We will build a true, commu- a true community club based upon our family's knowledge of the city and in line with our plans that have been worked on closely with Newcastle City Council to deliver long-term sustainable growth for the area yes please and um oh i've got to pronounce his name lawler thank you very much for this uh, his excellency his excellency i can't even spell the say the english word out of the sentence his excellency yasser al ramayan governor of pif we are extremely proud to become the new owners of newcastle united one of the most famous clubs in english football we thank the newcastle fans for their tremendously loyal support over the years and we are excited to work together with them i mean they're saying all the right things aren't they harry absolutely like it 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 couldn't be much better they're showing all the ambition like whether safely meant to say it or not the fact that she said the fact that she even thought about saying we're going to win the league in the next five to ten years is absolutely crazy and has everyone breathless. Like, honestly, it it they're saying all the right things. Everyone, even the communication immediately from from day dot from um, from obviously Yasser Al Ramayan, from Jamie Rubin, from Amanda Sabley, from uh, Godusi. It, it's incredible. Uh, it's, it's genuinely as if we're in dreamland. It, it, we are in dreamland. And when it sinks in, um, it will be amazing. I think that, that game next week at Spurs is going to be one hell of a day. But um, Harry, you three. were also doing the media rounds yesterday. Um, you got yourself on Talk Sport and you were the first one, I think. Were you the first one on Talk Sport after the takeover was announced? Officially. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with surreal. that, then uh, Lee, play the clip of uh, Harry on TalkSport. 
predicted today that the deal would be imminent. It is now done. The club has been sold to the consortium with immediate effect. Newcastle takeover completed. So just to confirm, even though you've said it, Mike Ashley no longer owns the club. The takeover has been completed. Yep, the Mike Ashley years are oh, over. That is exciting times, by the way. That's amazing. That's Manchester United now fifth. <laughs> That's your first thing. Let's go to the phone lines. It's all about you, the football fan, Newcastle fans. You may want to sing it from the rooftops. 08717 Let's find out how the fans are feeling. Harry's a Newcastle fan. Harry, you are first up to react to the news. I think you've got your club back. Yeah, absolutely. I am absolutely delighted, honestly. It's uh, incredible news. Incredible. You, don't, you don't sound the happiest, Harry. Is it, is it not sunk yeah. in yet, Harry? <laughs> No, it's just it's just incredible. Um, all I've lived through is Mike Ashley. It's uh, it's, it's so tragic. But um, hopefully now there'll be a bit of belief about the club, a bit of a bit of hope, a bit of ambition. Harry, you know, what, Harry, what's the first thing you want to see happen now? Now it's official. What's the first decision you want to see these guys make? Uh, to be honest, uh, Steve Bruce has got to go. Um, that's the first decision I would like to see. Uh, I'd like to see the plans, what they're going to do with the infrastructure. Um, what they think of the playing squad, etc. But, but first and foremost, he might be a nice bloke, but um, Steve Bruce has got to go. The sad thing is now, for being a new, I'm not a Newcastle fan, but being a Newcastle fan, is all of a sudden now the, the different like aspects of your shopping list all of a sudden goes from. You'll be thinking, oh, Mbappe. Exactly. Now Conte all of a sudden. Neymar. Is now, yeah. It's crazy. It's Hard unbelievable. It is frightening. Frightening indeed. That was. Harry on Talk Sport. So we had all bases covered in the end, Brandon. I'm surprised. Were you, were you not um, invited on to Dutch News? Um, and you will have to unmute your microphone. No, no not at all, mate. Excellent not at all. Work. Do you hear me? Oh, there we go. Do you hear me? Yeah, no Dutch News for you. That's a shame. Um no. Yeah, as as we start to to wrap up tonight, keep them uh, comments. Can I hold back. one thing against you though? Uh, Go on. As I was thinking about uh, today during work, uh, and I just saw it in the comments as well. Uh, do you think we should have as a backup striker, or maybe he can play along with Callum Wilson? Uh, go uh, for Ivan Tony again. Ooh, I don't know. I'd be I'd be looking at. To be honest, like I can't believe I'm saying this because considering like the last few transfer windows we've had, I think you've got to be looking at someone that's better than Callum Wilson and like a, like a couple a level or two above. I mean, this sounds so silly, but it, it, it's now our reality, which just I can't get my head around. But, but I, the, I would but be looking at the likes of Ivan like, Tony, we, we, which again think, sounds stupid. I'd be looking. I actually think uh, I'll. I'll... Probably the most important thing to do is is, is widen uh, widen our, uh, our our squad, you know, because like you see now, if you have a few injuries or we have loads now actually, our whole team is it's shit, it all falls down. So I think like if you look at Man City's their bench, it's it's just almost as strong as as their first starting eleven. So that's why they probably win the league most of the times, and you know what I mean. Like we need to widen our. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, again, it's 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 a slow. It's going to be a slow build process, isn't it? Um, look, yeah. the, like, as I said, the funds are definitely there, and and, and I would certainly be looking at centre forward as a as a position that desperately needs strengthening. But um, there's a, a couple of comments coming in. Patrick Schick says uh, Craig Johnson. Yes, I would um, like it. Seeing comments saying Lacazette. Um, so Jack. Yeah. It's 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 one of them that, uh, like Matthew Thompson says, dream a bit bigger than Tony. I think you've got to try and improve the squad at every every possible opportunity now, and you should be looking to not improve on the backup striker, which is Dwight Gale and, and Joe Linton, arguably, or whatever position he turns up at. But you have to be yeah, we need good to improve that's, on that's... Alan Wilson. We need uh, we need good backups, and that, that's probably the point I try to make, <laughs> and I'm just coming to that now. Uh, no, yeah, we need good not, backups. And... It's 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 not the fact that we need good backups; it's like we need good first team players. I as well, of course. That that that's that. I I, I completely see what you're saying that we need good backups. 
that that was the kind of like old reality if you get what i mean and i it, it's i i feel like i'm saying something stupid which i mean the comments will no doubt tell me but but it's like we've got to look above and beyond that now um right, right. we yeah, need to set crazy. that I we mean, need to let, let go of that old exciting few years we need to get uh, away from that old mindset new custom mindset that we had after 14 years like I kind of grew into it. You saw it at Matt yeah. uh, when he had that interview. Right. Uh, like he still thinks about Norwich players to sign. It's like the mindset is it has to change. So yeah, I guess it's true. Yeah, that's, that's that, that that is absolutely spot on. And I, I I saw I think the Daily Mail were linking us with Coutinho. And look, there's going to be a lot, a lot of of rumours and 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 whatnot. And we're going to be linked to pretty much everyone and. It's look. It's going to be an exciting time. But um, thank you very much for all your comments tonight. Um, we're going to be wrapping up uh, very shortly. I mean, if you've only just joined us, then I mean, please like the video and go back and watch from the start. We've been lucky enough to be joined by Navi Solano tonight. We were joined by Andrew Musgrove, by stand-up comedian Andrew as well, who was great value as always. Coming up tomorrow on nftv myself and lee earlier today spoke with the greatest human being of all time alan shearer that will be out tomorrow on newcastle fans tv so please like and subscribe and hit that alarm bell so you do not miss a thing hit join as well exclusive news and and you get word of coming up on nftv you will know first if you join up to be a member um, the Greenwood and Mulliner show, myself and Johnny's um, standalone podcast that we do as part of Newcastle Fans TV, that's available on every podcast app. Each week we interview a new uh, a new famous face. Um, last week was Mark Clattenburg, and um, we uh, this week we interviewed Lyndon Longhorn, who was at uh, the Paralympics. And on Sunday, we, we welcome Owen Bailey onto the show, who was Newcastle under-23 captain last season and he's now at Gateshead so we're looking forward to speaking to him Brandon thank you very much for your company this evening thank you to Harry you and well, Liam you. as well and a huge thank you to Andrew Musgrove Ant Young and Newcastle United legend Nobby Solano and of course Lee producing in what to come on NFTV please like and subscribe and we will see you all very very soon